Hey everyone, Nancy Morris here with a crash course on stress. I'm a certified business psychologist here in Ottawa and what I want to cover to do with you today very quickly is what stress is and isn't, how you can manage it for yourself and help other people to manage it for themselves as well, and then how you can actually use the concepts of uh, stress in business. So like I say, we are going to go through this pretty quick. So I encourage you just to jot down um, a note or a bullet point on the ideas that really speak to you. You won't capture it all, so so don't worry about that. But just mark down points that um, do resonate for you with a view to looking into further information later. So how is it that you define stress? What words do you use for yourself? Um, when you're feeling stressed, you know, stress is a big concept and it can include many ideas, many words will define and describe stress. So what words do you use? And of the people around you, what words do they use when they're, where they're trying to give you the message that they are feeling stressed? Do they actually use the word stress or do they use words like, I'm under a great deal of pressure or I feel overwhelmed? So, you know, stress has a lot of words that we can use to define it, but what we want to do right now is be a little clearer on what it actually is. So in psychology, we define stress as the mind and body's response to your constantly changing environment. In other words, everything around you and, and even inside of you is constantly changing. And your mind and your body needs to respond to that you know, mostly subconsciously, but your mind and your body needs to respond to that. And that, in essence, creates a, a sense of stress. It's a tension. Now, as we'll talk about in a moment, that tension is good. It's when other things are happening that makes it not so good. And that's what we want to talk about, is the, the two main types of stress that we talk about in psychology. The first is something known as critical stress. Now, critical stress is that high intensity, but short duration kind of stress. So examples of critical stress would be, um, say, moving, moving house. And, um, you know, that it's pretty full on for a short period of time, then you move and um, yes, you have to start unpacking and everything, but it starts to, to calm down. So the duration is short. Maybe you start a new job or start a new business, lose a job, lose a business. Um, maybe you have a sudden financial change, either up or down. These are what we would describe as critical types of stress. After the event has occurred, there is either a real or perceived kind of change or or moving towards not so much an ending, but a, a, a change that um, is in the rear view mirror, for want of a better phrase. So, But it's really intense when you're in it. So high intensity, short duration, critical stress. Psychologically, we're actually built quite well to manage critical stress because we know that the stress we're feeling is around a specific event that is essentially in a time frame. So we're pretty good at managing that kind of stress. The stress we're not so good at and the stress that really we're talking about that gets in our way of, of our daily lives is what's known as chronic stress. And that is the incessant daily nitpicky stuff that just gets in your way. So you might have some personal habits like bad eating or not sleeping well. Um, that is a chronic kind of stress. Maybe you're in a bad personal relationship or there's something going on at work with somebody that is just driving you a bit batty, but it's every day or, or frequently over the course of a week. It's that chronic thing, ongoing financial trouble, which is pretty common right now. There's a lot of people going through ongoing financial trouble that they don't necessarily feel there's an end to. Negative self-talk is another example of chronic stress. These types of day-to-day -day stressors are what is really unhealthy, both you know, physiologically and emotionally or mentally unhealthy for you and the people around you with critical stress, that high intensity stuff, we know it's generally a, a short duration. It is the chronic stress that feels never ending and tends to feel quite hopeless. But I want you to recognize, however, that particularly at work, 
there is something known as the yerkes dodson law of performance. Now, there's different models of stress and stuff, but I want to focus on this one because it's very work-related. It's very um, work performance-related for both you and the people in your organization. As you can see, it looks kind of like a bell curve. But as you can also see, on both ends of this, whether you're on the far right-hand side where you're sort of burnt out or broken down, and on the far left-hand side, you're not able to function. If you're on either side of this bell curve, you are not functioning well at all. So optimum stress, good healthy stress, keeps us motivated and focused. It is that type of tension I mentioned earlier that gets us out of bed and gets our brain focused on the task at hand, gets us moving towards a performance goal or the achievement of something that's within our control. What I want you to notice is that, uh, according to this yerkes dodson law, is that peak performance is just over the top, just over the top of the bell curve. So you're just pushing yourself a little bit. It's right, um, slightly right of center. But what we also need to bear in mind is that for everybody, their peak performance could be a little bit different. It could be slightly left of that, or it could be even a little bit further right. Everybody is different in this regard. So being there is no sort of you achieve X and everybody is going to be at peak performance. It doesn't really work that way. What's important is for you to find out for yourself where your line of peak performance is and then build the world around you, your systems, your way of being, whatever it happens to be, so that you're at peak performance. And then as a business leader, you can also help people working with you to find that out for themselves as well. The key message here is that stress when managed well is healthy, appropriate, and better than no stress, like better than being completely inactive and, and not moving forward. Um, and when you get on the right hand side of this peak performance chart, you want to be very mindful of how to get back. So how do you get back? How do you get into that position of peak performance? Well, remembering that stress can either help or hinder you in getting things done. One of the things to do when you're feeling that chronic day-to-day -day stress is look at how you're talking to yourself. Remember I said a moment ago that chronic stress can include negative self-talk. Some of the self-talk is making your concepts of stress worse because excessive stress occurs when perceived demand exceeds perceived ability to cope. Now I'm going to say that again because this is one of the things that I'd like you to write down. Excessive stress occurs when perceived demand exceeds perceived ability to cope. You'll notice the word here that I've of course highlighted in red is perception, perceived. If you believe, if you perceive that's what's being asked of you is too high and you perceive that your ability to cope with it is low, you're going to feel excessive stress. If as a business leader you are creating an environment where most people in your organization will feel that their demand is high and their ability to cope is low, then everybody's going to feel stressed. But what you want to remember is that of these two things, demand and coping ability, the coping ability is the most important to focus on because that's where the negative self-talk comes in. We have a tendency to say to ourselves that we can't manage something, we can't cope, we can't do it. We have very negative language around all of that. And if you were to look back into your life, or if you were supporting someone in your organization, encouraging them to look back into their life, I have no doubt that you'll be able to find examples of what you've been able to achieve that shows you that you can cope with what's going on, even if the demand is high. We don't get to where we are today without being able to cope with demand. We, we just don't. So the perception part of excessive stress is a story in your head 
And what is the story? The story is about demand and it's about your ability to cope. And the most important part of that story to focus on is your ability to cope. I'm sure you can find that you have dealt with all sorts of things that you didn't think that you could. And that's where you need to be mindful of your negative self-talk and really challenge that story in your head. A couple of additional strategies for you on mitigating or reducing the impact of chronic stress in your life. Anywhere that you feel a lack of confidence in your life is worth you spending some time building on. Building confidence in um, one aspect can help you to have confidence in all aspects. So if you know for yourself that you are low in confidence, I would encourage you to, to start there to, well, maybe not start there, but, but work on that. Another thing is, where can you be more curious in your life? Is there a subject that you'd like to learn more about or a hobby or something? Your brain really likes to be curious. It loves to learn. So doing that intentionally and consciously, um, using your brain's ability to be curious can help you to rearrange that story in your head about your ability to cope with the demands. Focusing on things that you can control rather than the stuff that you can't um, is really important when it comes to managing stress. We tend to get bogged down in all the negative stories and all the stuff that's going on in the world and we, we say that it's stressing us out. Well, you can't actually do anything about it. So, you know, for, for a lot of that stuff, there's nothing you can do except for manage the conversation in your head. So stay focused on that. That you can control. You can't control what's going on, but you can control how you respond to it. And then the really important part about managing stress is not shooting on yourself or other people. I'm very careful how I say that. That's because the word should is one of the nastiest words that we have in our English language. And it is a societal pressure rather than a conscious choice. So when you're talking about what you should be able to do or what you shouldn't do or whatever, you're just basically beating yourself over the head. If you're also doing that about other people, you're also beating them over the head too. So avoid using the word should. We, we tend to use it an awful lot and really it is a way to um, increase your own levels of stress by continuing to should on yourself and other people. So quick reminder. There is uh, two primary types of stress, critical stress, which is high intensity, short duration, and chronic stress. That is the unhealthy stress that will be impacting people quite a lot these days. And it's the one that you have some control over by managing that story in your head because it's quite likely that you do have an ability to cope with what's going on when you sit back and take a look at your life story and what you've been able to do. Focus on things that you can control. Work on building your confidence. Do something that creates a sense of curiosity in your world. That's why we often say, you know, if you're feeling stressed, have a hobby. It's because we know that being curious and being a person who is learning helps to, to change the storyline in your head. And definitely, definitely, definitely drop the shoulds in your life. Work to reduce how it is that you're throwing judgment around towards yourself and other people. Now, I know I've gone over this really quickly. Of course, if you have any questions, just feel free to email me at nancy at nancymorris.com. Happy to answer any questions that you have. But please do understand that you do have an ability to cope. And you, even if the demand is high, you have an ability to cope. And I want you to, to move forward towards peak performance for, for yourself, that healthy kind of stress that helps you to be engaged and focused and productive and performing at work. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care.